Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zeng here, and today we are doing the very, very last team builder for the Multi Battle League because, of course, we are down to the finals versus Team Dream Ball. I've got Baz with me here, and we're about to talk through our very last team for this competition. Yep, here we go. Hello, people. Hello, hello, internet. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> right, well, here we go. The amount of people that said, you know, first week could be the final, and uh, here we are. Team Dream Ball. I was actually, yeah, you know, I was watching over that game again, and it was so close. Like, it was such an intense game. It might have been our longest game uh, out of all the games we played. So, you know, I'm sure this is the finals that uh, probably a lot of people could have predicted from the beginning, but it wasn't an easy road by any chance. A lot of our opponents in this league were very, very good. You know, we were almost eliminated in the semifinals, had to pull that kind of miraculous comeback. And, uh, of course, now we are matched up against two of the best Pokemon VGC players in the world. And, you know, we know them pretty well, obviously, and it should be a really, really fun time. I just hope that we get a good match overall. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, it's not going to be exactly the same as week one, though, because we have made, and they have made, some changes to their team via free agency. So, here we go. What have we got, then? Yeah. Got... Yeah, go on. Yeah. Yeah, so we switched the uh, Weavile for the Mega Gyarados, and we thought Mega Gyarados, you know, kind of matched up pretty nicely against their team, especially because the Dark gives a lot of good coverage. Uh, one of the main issues we had was that uh, we weren't using our Mega Evolutions, or in general, like, uh, you know, for example, Dream Ball is a team that uses their Megas all the time, and because they had Kangaskhan and Me Metagross, uh, whereas we had Lucario and Pinsir, and both of those were kind of flex picks, where, you know, Lucario did put in a lot of work last week, uh, Pinsir really barely saw any usage, so uh, we were able to swap one of our OU picks for an OU Mega, as a result, we did have to switch the Pinsir as well, uh, we actually ended up taking the Sheninja, which is, uh, you know, one of the lower tier Pokemon, but we thought actually was one of the few Pokemon that could make an impact against their team and would make at least, you know, the mind games a little bit more real. Yeah, definitely. And then, yeah. Yeah. We're not necessarily, you know, planning at this point to bring the Shedinja, but on team preview, it will make them think twice. It'll make them in their team building, maybe put a random hidden power fire on their Politoed or, well, you know, probably not that, but something random that can maybe take up a move slot for something that they might more, you know, have so that's a bit more useful than what they would normally have, if you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, so... they, yeah, they've changed the Tornadus to Mamoswine and Magma to uh, Gothi Tell as well. I'm pretty sure um, their Magma did scare us a little bit in the uh, team preview it did. of the last game. It did, yeah. yeah. So, um, so that was really tricky. Yeah, just because of the follow me threat and um, the flame body and all the rest of it. Their um, Tornadus was scarfed as well, so it was faster than our Aerodactyl. But it Mamoswine was, yeah. and Gothitel, Gothitel especially, could be a little bit tricky as well. Yep, the Trick Room option is definitely a lot more viable on their end this time if they do choose to go for it. And I know they actually had Trick Room on Goth last week. Yeah, yeah, before uh, life had one-shot it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a pretty interesting battle between uh, Team Jamie and uh, Dream Ball. Yeah, you know, Jamie clearly came very, very prepared. Um, but Dream Ball was able to just really pull the comeback, one, with a lot of momentum from Metagross. And then, too, uh, you know, getting a little bit lucky with full paralysis there in the end. But that was an incredible game, you know, something you'd expect from just some of the best players in the world. And hopefully our match uh, kind of matches up to that. Just, you know, a little bit less RNG, just a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, it, it was uh, just yeah, some paralysis rolls, wasn't it? But uh, let's have a look at the teams. Here we go. Right. So we've got, yeah, I mean, like you were saying with the, um, the whole Mega Gyarados thing, you know, we didn't use our Megas. We could have probably done this a little bit earlier on, like, you know, before the, the top cut, because we weren't really using Penta that much, and... Yep, yep. You know, Mega Gyarados was just sitting there, no team picked it, and it fits so well with Raichu as well. Okay, we've got two water types now as well, but, um, you know, for this matchup especially, I think it could do some work for us. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the dark typing is a really, really big deal, and it also, uh, you know, matches up pretty nicely against Metagross, uh, Metagross, you know, was such a big threat last week. It literally, I think, picked up five knockouts against Team Jamie. But yeah. here, uh, you know, last you know, last time we played uh, Team Dream Ball, you can you guys can actually check out that battle on Baz's channel in the description below. But uh, it was a really, really good game. Both of us had a lot of tricks up our sleeves, and we were able to just uh, knock out Metagross last time because we had Sunny Day Aerodactyl, and Volcarona was able to just heat wave it into oblivion. So uh, Metagross wasn't that big of a factor, nor was their Kangaskhan last time. Uh, it was really the rain mode of Politoed, Parasect, and Kingdra that gave us a lot of trouble last time around. Um, yeah. But, you know, they have made some adjustments this time, and I think that the teams we end up bringing are going to look a little bit different than uh, how we had our strategies work around last time. Yes, I'm sure they're not just going to fake out straight into Lucario as well turn one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, so 
I don't know, do you think it would be easier if we sort of pick out what we think they are going to use? Because I've had a, I've had a, you know, a bit of spare time today, and I've had a, a bit of a think around. Now, I don't know if you agree with me here, but I think they're definitely going to bring the Kangaskhan. So I'll yep. pop that down there. I think they're definitely going to bring the Rotom. So I'll pop that Agreed. down there. I think they're yep. definitely going to bring the Politoed. So I'll pop yep. that down there. Definitely the Metagross. So I'll pop that down there. So the last one is, or the last two rather, is either going to be Mamoswine, between Mamoswine, Gengar, and either Parasect or Virizion, I think. I don't think they'll bring both grass types. I think they'll bring either one of these, probably the Parasect. So yeah. I'm hesitant to, to put Parasect down there a little bit. So maybe Parasect and maybe either Mamoswine or Gengar. So how do you feel about about that prediction, as it were. Yeah, I definitely uh, agree with the first four you picked. I think, like, those four are just so crucial. Politoed especially because it reduces the super effective fire type attacks. Uh, like, one thing I was thinking is, oh, we could, like, Scarf our Volcarona just to nuke the Metagross, but if they do, do bring in Politoed and switch it in, then, you know, that obviously mitigates it. So, uh, I definitely think Politoed is still a, a factor here. Yeah. Uh, I can't see them not bringing Kang, Metagross, or Rotom, honestly. I feel like those are just so good for their whole team, and it's such a solid core. You know, there's a reason why those Pokemon have been pretty good in BGC historically as well. Um, and when it comes to the last couple of Pokemon, I was really thinking about this. Like, they could go with Goth. Like, a Goth lead is something I'm still really scared of, which yeah. is why it's like, uh, how we choose our leads, I think, in this matchup will actually pre be pretty dependent on team preview based off whether they bring the Goth to tower or not. Um, for example, if Goth isn't one of the is one of the two Pokemon they leave on the bench, then we have some more leeway for what we want to lead with. Whereas, yeah, yeah. if they do have the Goth option, we have to consider that a little bit more. Um, and then I feel like they're probably going to want to tech like Stone Edge or a Rock type attack, uh, specifically on Mamoswine or Virizion. So I feel like one of those two we're definitely going to see. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And Gengar's a little bit scary, right? Because it gets access to Sludge Bomb, which hits Azumarill for super effective. Uh, it can outspeed Lucario and potentially even Will O Wisp it before we Mega Evolve. So um, Gengar was also something I was a little bit concerned about. I think like Will O Wisp is one of yeah, my. Yeah, and, and burning the Gyarados picks. too. That's one of the few answers exactly. to it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Uh, interestingly enough, as well, as we're sort of thinking about what they might bring, we're not thinking they're going to bring their Kingdra, which is very interesting. Right, because it was such a big factor last time. And that's the thing, right? Like, I feel like we still need to prepare for it because, like, if we don't have the right tools for it, the rain mode still gives us a lot of trouble. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what makes this really scary because, like, the chances are we're going to have some moves on some Pokemon that end up being useless because they don't end up bringing what we think they would do. But, you know, in a setting like this, we really have to be prepared, prepared for anything. Yes, yeah. But I think the four of Kangaskhan, Rotom, Metagross, and Politoed are the four that we both think they are definitely going to bring. I mean, yeah. Team Preview will actually be quite interesting, because we'll see that they won't have brought two of these things, and yeah. that will give something a bit more leeway. Like, for example, like if we're planning on going forward with like a Gyarados sweep, then the Virizion is the only thing that can really potentially, like, do a, a massive chunk to it in one hit so right in that you know in that case we will definitely want the aerodactyl to to cover that so if they yeah. don't have the verizion in a team preview then maybe we wouldn't want the the aerodactyl i don't know it depends how many sunny days we want on the team this time <laughs> yeah no i remember last time i really think if we just had sunny day on amoongus uh the game would have been over like yeah. right there and then because uh, we had a lot of issue dealing with their rain mode after they were able to get Parasect and Kingdra in with rain up, and our Aerodactyl went down, so we couldn't Sunny Day. So, um, you know, that, and then in the end, it came down a little bit to sleep turns because Parasect had the Sash last time. If we have Sun, uh, then, you know, it just kind of faints because of Dry Skin, where it's taking yeah. damage instead yeah. of healing. So, um, I don't know. I think if we bring Amoongus here, Sunny Day might be the call because it just gives us a surefire answer against Poly Kingdra and Parasect. Yeah, that's right. If they if they do bring the king, to, I mean, could right, come into right. a situation <laughs> where we really want to protect on the Zen headbutt or something and, and can't. But uh, but yeah, I, I definitely see what you're saying there. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, like like I was just sort of mentioning before we started recording this, the one thing that really stands out to me is this Rotom. Now, I am scared of this Rotom. Yeah, and they didn't even bring it last time. They had it on the team preview, but, uh, you know, it wasn't a factor, which I was kind of surprised by because uh, if you look at the team comp, like, even considering the Pokemon we swapped out, Rotom still would have been really good against Weavile and Pinsir. Yeah. So, uh, them not bringing it last time uh, was kind of a curious decision. I'm sure part of it was because they focused very heavily on the rain mode last time with Poly, Kingdra, Parasect, and uh, Tornadus. Um, so something tells me this time around it's not going to be nearly as rain-centric. Yeah, yeah. That's, that was my thoughts as well. And mm -hmm. um, the other thing, again, like I was saying, was that I do think that this is going to be a timid, scarfed Rotom. They did use yeah. scarf Rotom against the Jamies. Um but I'm not thinking because of that. I'm thinking because, 
you know, we like to set up, and Gyarados, you know, quite commonly has Dragon Dance. Rotom is naturally faster than Gyarados, so if they are timid, even if we're jolly, with their Scarf, they are still going to be faster than our Gyarados at plus one. I also think that their Rotom will probably have Discharge on it as well. Mm, yeah. But, you know, you know, obviously to get around the Lightning Rod, but the only thing that they can really safely Discharge next to is their Mamoswine. You know, maybe right. the Verizion or, or, uh, or Parasect if they you know don't care about getting paralyzed or something as well but um there's definitely some wiggle room with the rotom it i mean it really depends on if they are scarfed because if they mm -hmm. are we can you know hopefully scout it out before too much damage is taken and uh, play around it in that way if it's not scarfed then that means we only need to dragon dance at once with gyarados or you know we can just hit it straight away with a, a close combat from lucario or something like that and right and take right. care of it that way too um right Another few interesting things, like, I've had a bit of time, as you can tell. <laughs> um, a Scarfed Aerodactyl at level 100 is faster than a timid Kingdra in the rain, which I didn't know. So oh, wow. if That's we crazy. really wanted to try something funny, like if we wanted to sash somewhere else, we could maybe go, um, you know, like that with Skydrop or Sunny Day or something. Um, right. Deoxys, if it's, like, timid max speed, is faster than um, Scarfed Mamoswine as well. Huh, interesting. But um, I, I, I've got seven things on our team that I'm thinking, okay, we want six of these seven. So right. I'll put forward to you my seven. So mm -hmm. Amoongus. Yep. Azumarill. Yep. Um, um, Lucario. forgot its name. Sorry, Lucario. <laughs> <laughs> Volcarona. Um, Aerodactyl. Raichu. And, oh, okay, so it was just the first seven. That was a bit of a random flag. So just the first seven Pokemon. Um, I don't really see too much use for Deoxys, because if we are going to take Aerodactyl, which I think we need for the Rotom, then we really yeah. do want the Sash on that, in case it gets into a position where uh, Kingdra is in rain. Um, and Deoxys, as we've kind of learned through this tournament, isn't that good if it hasn't got a Sash on it. Um, yeah. Smurgle, I think could do some things but if they have like i really do think they're going to have scarfed either the rotom or the mammoth swine and yeah, you know sure. if we like went wanted to go for a scarf smurgle or something like that because the sash is already taken and it's still going to be slower than those shedinja i can't really see doing too much to be honest either so those seven the problem is which one do we not want that so how how much do you agree with me with these seven I, I agree with them uh, a lot. I think, like, they feel a lot safer to play with. Uh, there's a lot of priority on their team. Uh, you know, Bullet Punch, they had that on Metagross last time. Obviously, Sucker Punch on Kangaskhan. Uh, Ice Shard from Mamoswine. And then, you know, just to name a couple. Uh, so Deoxys, you know, it's it's nice, but it doesn't even... It's not able to pick up huge one-hit knockouts on a lot of these Pokemon. And that's typically what you want Deoxys for. So... Uh, I'm not sure how great that is. Smeargle, I was thinking, like, we could cheese them a little bit with Smeargle because, obviously, uh, they're not going to know what item it's going to have or what moveset it's going to have. But without the Dark Void threat, obviously, because we can't use Dark Void in this format, uh, it's a lot less potent. So, not sure how much about that. Shininja's a really interesting pick, but I feel like they've got to be packing a ton of counters to it because we have it in team preview. So, yeah. uh, you know, just by having it, they kind of have to waste a couple of move slots potentially on trying to counter it. So, that yeah. way, if we don't bring yeah, it, you yeah, know. Hopefully, that does the damage at the team preview, you know, at, at the team builder. Right point right you know? exactly yeah um but um yeah i agree with the seven now it's just a matter of you know which one do we not want to bring which is so tricky yeah i mean like i i did i i am i have been thinking a little bit about smurgle and yeah i don't know what we could do with it but I, I do i do have a little nagging voice at the back of my head sort of saying that it could potentially do something this is best of one this is the final you know right. i'm sure we could do something with it but, yeah, I was thinking, like, even if it's something crazy like Scarf Destiny Bond or, you know, some really gimmicky move, like, that could just totally catch them off guard. But uh, the thing is, like, if it doesn't work out, then we're just really screwed because yeah. it ends up being, like, dead weight. So it's like, do we want to take that risk? Like, it's it's one of the things that we could potentially catch the, the Rotom off guard with. Like, right, something right. Because I... everything else is relatively predictable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, Agreed. they they will probably know what our movesets are for like all of these seven pokemon if we take them like right. they they could probably suspect the sunny day on the on the amoongus stuff we said last time we've been using yeah. almost the same sets for for the rest of the pokemon um uh, throughout this whole thing as well um we have yeah so like the smurgle is interesting but i just because it's slower than the kangaskhan and because it's slower than the metagross 
like and like most of their team actually then right it's just i don't know i'm not sure yeah it feels like you would really need a scarf in order to you know pull anything off substantially i mean the other nice thing is like it would be able to use follow me yeah uh, which you know could direct attacks away from any pokemon with safety goggles because i could see them going with safety goggles on something as well yes yeah um Maybe Gengar, maybe Rotom Heat if they don't scarf it, etc. So yeah, yeah, potentially Wide Guard too if they did lock into uh, Discharge. Right, but it is really tricky. I don't know. Like Smeargle, it's like, is it really reliable? Because at least the other seven, like they're all Pokemon. You know, you can really do something with. Whereas with Smeargle, it seems really hit or miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spore, Spore just isn't Dark Void, I guess. It's not. Yeah, um, and obviously they've got a Kangaskhan too, which is you know one of Smeargle's least favorite Pokemon to go up against since it just hit twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know potential um, Icicle Spear on um, Mamoswine just in case we did want the Sash and all the rest of it too. So yeah. yeah. So I, I I do think that these last three over here we don't really want. Um, I don't know. I think the one out of these seven that I was thinking maybe we could do without is, and it sounds really strange. Maybe the Azumarill. We didn't take mm -hmm. Azumarill last time, but it could do very you know a lot of work for us here because of the priority Aquajet on that Rotom. I'm just really scared about that Rotom. Me too. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, uh, we actually ended up not bringing Azumarill at all last time, and that was actually pretty good for us, because in the late game, we had Raichu over Azumarill, uh, and the Assault Vest Raichu was able to kind of yeah. know, finish up the game last time around. Yeah, they um, don't have a Tornadus once... this time, though. Right. Yeah, I feel like their team composition is going to be... Sign... Like, they're going to play it a lot differently than last time. Yeah. Like, um, And that that's what makes this really tricky. Like, last time we had... We prepared well enough where, you know, we kind of expected rain, and we were able to deal with it. Uh, this time the rain threat's still really real, but I don't know. I just feel like they're not going to go with it uh, or prioritize it nearly as much. Yeah, same. I, I, I do think so too. But I mean, even though they haven't got the Tornadus, I do think that Raichu is probably necessary just in case they do, um, you know, lock into a Thunderbolt or something like that. Yeah. Like, you know, um, it, it would protect so many of my, you know, so many of these Pokemon. Yeah, I think the other tricky thing is like, Volcarona is like something that I've been thinking a lot about as well because, you know, obviously it hits for super effective against Metagross, uh, Rizium, Amoswine, but uh, I'm really scared of random, you know, like uh, rock type attacks coming out from their side. And the other question is, you know, what kind of Volk set would we even want to run? Last time we were able to get a Quiver Dance set up and it paired up really nicely with Sky Drop. Um, but I don't know, it's tricky because it's like it does so nicely against Metagross. And last time it was pivotal in knocking out Metagross, but uh, other than that, you know, it, it doesn't do too much and it can get knocked out easily it hits the um parasect and doesn't really That's care true, yeah. too much with the lumberry as well right, uh, right i do i do actually think volcarona is still quite important here um mm -hmm. we did we did have giga drain on it last time and i do actually think bug buzz is the better option here yeah just definitely. because like if they do substitute we can bug buzz them through um the substitute oh yeah i didn't, I didn't even uh <laughs> forgot about that yeah but also they've got gothitelle now too so we can hit that a bit harder and um the difference between like a Giga Drain on a Mamoswine or a Politoed and a Bug Buzz is not actually that big. There's, you know, they're not that different in in um, damage, to be honest. So Bug Buzz is probably the better option in hindsight with that one. But yeah, I don't know. Like if again, if we're not thinking they're going to go, you know, complete rain mode, that does give Volcarona a bit more leeway as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do have the option of running Rage Powder and a bulkier set. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that. Like, there's a lot more redirection here than they probably anticipate because Lucario even gets access to follow me. Um, and the question is, you know, how setup centric do we want to go with this battle yeah. and with this team? I suppose because last time Volcarona was really important for us because it was like the only thing that we had that could hit the Metagross. This time we've yeah. we have got Mega uh, Gyarados as well, so maybe we could actually go with a support of Volcarona. Yeah, I mean, it I would help thinking. against the Kangaskhan as well. Like, it could potentially it would, burn yeah. it. Yeah. Although exactly. they could they could have the uh, seismic toss version, right? So, um, but you know, if we do have something like Will O Wisp on it, then that could still you know put the burn. Um, although I suppose then they could just still seismic toss yeah, around. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. That's honestly a really interesting option. I kind of like it. <laughs> like if you go with like a support bulky Volk, like you know, other than rock type attacks, there's not too much they can do. Rotom definitely doesn't do very much against it. Yeah. Uh, Metagross has forced basically Zen Headbutt into it. One risking the burn chance from Flame Body. Uh, two, risking a miss as well, and could cover uh, Gyarados pretty well. I didn't think about support Volk uh, when I was kind of, you know, 
thinking about all of this team, but like, honestly, it could be very helpful here. Potentially, potentially, yeah. I mean, I when 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 I first thought about it, I I didn't think I didn't go for it straight away, but that is because I didn't realize that uh, we did have a second really strong option of hitting the uh, the Metagross now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, another thing as well is I suppose we've got to think about what they might lead because, yeah. like you were saying, the lead is is such an important thing here, and I think they are definitely going to lead with either one of Rotom. Or what was the other one I was thinking? I was thinking maybe Gengar actually. Um, I was that yeah because Gengar has like you know it's speedy outspeeds Lucario before Mega Evolving can start Will O Wisping or taunting or whatever. Exactly. Whatever, yeah. Right yeah. Or even yeah. Icy Wind should they go for it? So that's really scary as well. Or maybe even if they went with something like uh, Rotom and Mamoswine lead mm. because if we went something really simple and straightforward um, like Raichu and Gyarados, we could fake out one, but then. You know, the next, you know, then the the um, Mama Swine gets a free earthquake off, or maybe they could like take in freeze dry or something for the uh, Gyarados. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, good point. So like, yeah, you know, there's, there's always options, and right. this is the final. This is the last game of the NBL, so I think some options are going to be explored by by both sides here. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, you know, Wolf's especially known as a player in the you know who always just has you know, a couple of tricks up his sleeve and comes up with really interesting sets, even on common Pokemon. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we should expect everything, obviously. Uh, that's what makes this really, really scary. But, yeah, I don't know. Like, Rotom is just the Pokemon I'm most scared of, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, same. Um, if if they go with... I mean, they could lead with just, like, Kangaskhan and, uh, and Rotom as well. But right. um, I don't think they'll lead to... Um, physical attackers, just because we've got the Intimidate pressure. Intimidate, yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, so, I think it makes a lot of sense for Rotom or Gengar to come out, um, but we shouldn't count out, like, pure rain, like Poly King Drills in the yeah, either. Yeah. yeah, exactly, so we do need something that can kind of do well against both, and last game, we did lead with the Aerodactyl and Lucario, Lucario. didn't we? And yeah. And we had the Sash on the Aerodactyl, so that if they did lead with rain, we could survive a hit, and sunny day up and we exactly. with the lucario so that we could you know close combat the uh, kangaskhan and all the rest of it too so i still can see that lead doing some work it's just that if they do lead with a scarfed <laughs> you know rotom heat then we're losing one of our pokemon potentially right uh that's the other thing i was fearing because they actually went with scarf rotom heat and got the tell as a lead last time where it was like okay we'll get the trap instantly uh and maybe just nuke one of your pokemon so that could be pretty bad as well yeah yeah it's pretty scary to be honest isn't it like it is now their team comp like once, I mean, we've talked about our team composition of the Pokemon we ended up choosing, and, you know, they ended up with a very, very solid core. Like, you know, you could totally see, like, Kangaskhan, Gengar, Rotom Heat. Like, I mean, Yoshi literally used those, uh, like, you know, in his VGC team before. Those are, like, staples of VGC, so it's Pokemon, like, he's, you know, very familiar yeah, with. Yeah. And uh, uh, that Magic, like, they made really good mega choices and, uh, you know, uh, a, a good supporting cast uh, as well. So, you know, it's, it's obviously not going to be easy. Um, it's just, yeah, I mean, right now we really want to figure out, like, what is the Pokemon we want to drop from the seven. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously we want to bring those seven and then figure out which eighth one we want to bring into Team Preview. I'm thinking probably Shininja just to mind game them a little oh, bit more. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think so too. Um, but then, yeah, we need to... Uh, and then, you know, movesets as well. For the most part, you know, like we said, it's relatively predictable. You know, I think main things are, you know, what kind of set do we want on Aerodactyl, on Volcarona? Uh, do we want to stick with Assault Vest Raichu, etc. Yeah, yeah. Because... Yeah, I mean, Assault Vest did work well for us last time with Raichu, so it's kind of difficult to, to go away from that, but, like, just a surprise Encore could be so big for us. Hmm, I didn't even think about that, yeah. Or, like, a surprise Helping Hand, uh, you know, attack in, in some way, I don't know. Or, like, Air no, Balloon, really good point. Right. Air Balloon Raichu next to... Because, like, I'm thinking with the Gario, so I'm thinking, um, Waterfall Crunch Dragon Dance. Like yes, I'm not, I'm definitely. not thinking about earthquake. So, I'm not, yeah, I'm not either. Like, it would be difficult for us to earthquake, but it would mean that we could one shot the Rotom without needing any sort of boosts. Oh, that is true. Well, I mean, <clears> we, I suppose we we don't need Dragon Dance. We could have Waterfall Crunch and Earthquake, but I do really like Dragon Dance. Yeah, me too. I don't know. It's like if you get that one Dragon Dance up, then you're just doing so much damage and you're outspeeding everything too, for the most part. Yeah. I mean, just a little bit of detail as well. I was wondering, like, either Adamant or Jolly Gyarados. Gyarados has got the base 81 speed, where Mamoswine is 80. So I was leaning towards Jolly, so we could definitely outspeed the Mamoswine if it's not Scarfed. I was thinking that as well, yeah. 
So there's that. But yeah, like there's a whole thing with Aerodactyl as well. Like Verizon is too heavy to sky drop. So right. we really do need that to cover the Verizion, and so Aerial Ace, or Wing Attack, whatever, is, you know, the only real option that we've got there, but Skydrop is very useful as well, and it actually did a, a very, um, you know, nice little turn for us on the Kangaskhan last game too. Right, I mean, I could see, like, if we wanted to go with the same set last time, but drop, like, maybe Tailwind, because Tailwind wasn't actually that useful last yeah. time around, since yeah, rain yeah. out anyway, and we're naturally slower, um, so I could, I could see Tailwind, you know, Dropping that, although it would pair up a little bit better this time around, since we do have the Gyarados, um, which would mean like even if they were scarfed to Tailwind, uh, uh, you know, we yeah, just give I it see. Outspeed them. I see. Yeah, so that's the tricky part. Like, do we want to stick with Sunny Day again with Aerodactyl, or do we maybe drop that for Aerial Ways, or do we just drop Sky Drop, or well, you know, do we want Protect? All so many questions. Yeah, if we if we did drop the um, the Sunny Day from Aerodactyl, it how could we lead and be safe against Rain? Right. <laughs> like Very if we lived question. with if we lived with a Moongus, like maybe like a Knockaberry Moongus or something, then mm -hmm. that could rage powder away an overheat or a thunderbolt. Um, it just can't protect the partner from a discharge. But yeah, and the other concern is like if they go King Metagross like they did last time, a Moongus is just like yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. that kind of just uh, poops away. So yeah, I, this is really tricky. I, like, the lead matchup dictates so much, and I can't figure out, like, a really safe lead here. Unless we went with, like, um... I don't know, Amoongus and Volcarona, maybe. That's interesting. Because uh... if they did substitute with the Metagross, we could, you know, still Rage Powder everything away and bug buzz it through the substitute. Um... Mm -hmm. We could also consider a Pyapa Berry on Amoongus as opposed to, like, an Aka Berry. Yeah, yeah. Um, not sure if that's the best move, but just another, you know, it gives us a answer against Metagross, at least. Yeah, I mean, if the Rotom is scoffed, then Amoongus probably can survive an overheat, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's timid, as well. Right, right. But, I'm this, <laughs> this really it's so tricky. hard, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, most of you know, and that's the tricky thing about being limited to these Pokemon, right? Like, you have to play to the bounds, and, you know, we drafted them for a reason, but... Uh, I don't know, it's like this game could go very well, very poorly, or obviously anywhere in between. Yeah. As obvious yeah. as that sounds, like, you know, we just really don't want to walk into a really poor lead matchup, because, you know, Wolf and Marcus especially are the players that can capitalize really well if they're given an advantage, so, you know, last time we were kind of forcing them to play around us, uh, we don't, just, we don't want to give them the opportunity to start off well right from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I suppose we need a lead that gives us options and gives us some leeway if we come up to a bad matchup and I, I, I'm not sure they'll lead with Metagross again to be honest mm -hmm. I, I really can't I mean it has got the clear body so it doesn't worry too much about Intimidate but I don't know I don't know. I think, uh, I don't know, Kane Rotom looks kind of solid on their end. Yeah, like, I was, I, if I had to pick one lead, I think Kangaskhan Rotom would probably be their lead. Yeah, it's like if you scarf the Rotom, then, you know, Lucario's not a threat to the Kangaskhan anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if they have inner focus Kangaskhan, you know, that's another fear. But one way we could, I don't know, like Raichu counters the Rotom. Or not, it doesn't, it doesn't counter it, but it makes Rotom a little bit less useful. Um... And it could get the fake out onto Rotom before anything else, but then I suppose Kangaskhan could just fake out Raichu's partner, so that's, you know, not fun either. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm thinking now, like, how do we even beat King Rotom as a lead? I think... Hmm. Well... Lucario Volcarona? If we have Rage Powder on Volk, yeah, actually. Yeah. But that could... then that's very weak to just Polytoad Ludicolo. Um, King Joe, rather. <laughs> right. So... Um, I'm, I don't know, I'm thinking, so, like, yeah, Lucario Volk is really strong against, I mean, not really strong, but, like, if we do go the support Volk, you know, you could, like, double protect first one to mitigate the, uh, fake out play, although if they go for power, you know, they, they've been going for slower, like, you know, more su defensive, like, supportive Kangaskhan, but if they go with, like, typical VGC Kangaskhan with power-up punch, it's another thing to be really scared of. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't see them doing that. I suppose if we had if we had like a citrus berry on like if we didn't take Azumarill, if we did have mm. citrus berry on Volcarona, it could probably take you know with ease two overheats as well. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, and they don't really want to discharge next to their own Kangaskhan either. Right, right. But I suppose in that in that situation, well, in that situation, worst case scenario is they 
actually aren't scarfed Rotom might bluff it somehow, bring in the Mamoswine that actually is scarfed, and mm. Earthquakes. <laughs> right, right. Um, the more I think about it, though, I don't know, like, Volk Lucario is honestly not a bad option. If they do go pure rain, then I say, you know, maybe we do take in Sunny Day on Amoongus, and you go for a Protect Switch outplay turn one. Yeah. Um, but if they have Substitute, then, yeah, that could help them. But the thing is, if a Sunny Day goes up against Polytoad Kingdra, then they their damage output is just really bad. Um, but then the other fear is, like, if they have Rain Dance on Polytoad yeah, to set yeah. it back up. I mean, we could have, like, a, uh, I don't know, a Pasho Berry on Volcarona and Sunny, Sunny Day on that, and <laughs> Sacrifice Protect. Maybe that's a bit too silly. <laughs> I don't know, just <laughs> well, ways that, like, that like, lead it would... It sounds would... silly now, but then, you know, we start playing, and then it's like, oh, man, if we had Pasho Berry. Yeah. Like, it'd be so but... <laughs> Because, like, you know, maybe they, they'll just sort of bank on us overthinking this and just go with Polito Kingdra and, <laughs> you know. Right, right. But, mm, I don't know. I can see Kangaskhan and Rotom. Yeah, nah, I do too. <laughs> it's, you know, we're still at the same point. It's like, which one do we uh, yeah. not bring at this point? Hmm. Mm -mm. Oh, it's just a zoom roll. It's like, if it gets a belly drum up, Aqua Jet, like, one hit knocks out almost everything. Yeah, yeah. It's so tempting, isn't it? Like, when I was looking back on, on last, you know, the week one battle, I was kind of surprised we didn't take the Azumarill, but... Right, right. <laughs> I mean, if, <sighs> if we did, would we want, like, Knock Off or, or uh, Play Rough? I mean, Play Rough, the only advantages of having that is just to... I suppose it hits the Gothitelle as well, but it hits... Um, um, Play Rough, rather, hits the Kingdra. Uh, Knock Off hits the Gothitelle and a few other things. Right, um, and Verizian if we're in a position to play Ruffy for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, I was thinking, like, okay, let's say they don't bring Verizian as their 8. Um, honestly, I see them dropping Gothitelle and Parasect, like, if I had to predict which two they weren't gonna bring. Okay. Um, if, like, for example, they don't bring Verizian, then maybe we don't have to bring Aerodactyl. If they do have Verizian, then I think Aerodactyl is kind of a necessity. Yeah, um, yeah, it, like, the only thing, really, that we want the Aerodactyl for is the Frisian and a nice Rock Slide on the Rotom, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, Focus, I think Focus Sash is a, a really nice item to have in this battle. If we yeah, didn't we do have, need the Sash. If we didn't have Aerodactyl, then we wouldn't be using the Sash anywhere. That's a good point, yeah. Um, I'm just thinking, like, so, like, for example, if Frisian doesn't come out, then maybe we, you know, just don't bring Aerodactyl. If it does, then the question is, which one would we want to drop? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> maybe I want to say maybe Amoongus but that's also contingent off whether they bring the rain mode or not yeah I think they will always have Polito Kingdra in their team preview if they're going to bring point. it or not good point yeah so I don't think we're going to be able to sort of see past that one yeah um I, like I don't know L Lu Lucario I keep forgetting his name <laughs> Lucario <laughs> It's like that point in my life, just was sort of, that's when I was at university when Lucario came out. I just sort of forgot his name. <laughs> like, well, okay, so it helps against Kangaskhan. It helps, I guess, against uh, Mamoswine as well. I mean, I suppose the most likely targets for Focus Sash for them. I suppose they've got three: Gengar, Mamoswine, and uh, Parasect again. I was thinking yeah. maybe like they would Focus Sash their Mamoswine, but I don't know. I suppose maybe if they did do that, maybe they wouldn't bring the Parasect. Right, right. Um, I don't know. I I feel like Mamoswine is just more has more utility than Parasect here. Hmm. Um, <laughs> this is so hard. It is. It is. I I guess it's fitting that the finals is like the most difficult though. But, hmm. well, I think like if if we did. I suppose if we had Bug Buzz on the Volcarona, I was going to say, if we did lead Lucario and Volcarona, we wouldn't really have any ways to deal with the uh, uh, the Gothitelle. We could have, like, Faint on Lucario, potentially. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if we thought Gothitelle was potentially going to be a problem. But Right. I don't know. Like, it is tempting to just go with something like Raichu, Gyarados, but they've surely got to prepare for that right <laughs> i kind of want to just do it and call it a day but obviously you know we shouldn't you know, just try uh we need to be prepared for everything especially in the finals <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i think that lead is fairly easily counterable for for them um mm -hmm. but i don't know, like if we went with 
And then I'm thinking Smurgle again. Like, if we went with Smurgle, like, double protected, then we'd know, like, if the if the Rotom was off, we'd know it would be locked into, like, Discharge or something. I don't know, it's... <sighs> like, what could they have, really, for Raichu Gyarados? What's the worst option for that? Because, I don't know, if we just get a Dragon Dance with Gyarados turn one, you know, we can go from there. Uh, but, well, uh... Kangaskhan, Rotom, Kangaskhan, Gengar, uh, Rotom, Mamoswine. Mm-hmm. <sighs> but that's about well, it. Really. It's, yeah, it's just I hate the Will of Wisp options. Yeah, that I mean that's that is that is the thing with Gengar. I mean that's a, like if we you lead Raichu Gyarados and you switch into Volcarona, then like, you know, you can start and they, you know, for example, lead Rotom and they're locked into Will O Wisp, then uh, Volcarona can just rage powder the next turn and then start protecting Gyarados. Yeah. So, so I'm thinking, like, Raichu Gyarados isn't the end of the word because it provides us fake-out option right from the start. Chances are they'll go with the lead that, you know, matches up nicely against it, but then we can just uh, kind of catch them off-guard by switching to Volk, and that might be able to confirm the Rotom item as well, if we do go bulky Volk, which I think we should. So, if they lead with Kangaskhan Rotom, what would we do then? Um, okay, so we lead Raichu Gyarados. Yeah. Get the Intimidate on the Kangaskhan. Uh, we do have a faster fake-out turn one, so... Uh, we could just trade fake outs. Well, I suppose that wouldn't tell us whether we're scarf, whether it's scarfed or not. Yeah. Um. So the other option is just to protect Gyarados and switch into Volcaro in a turn one. Yeah, we could because, actually. Although yeah. then, um. Yeah, yeah. Because looking, if they were looking down, mm, I don't know. If they were looking down the right shoe and and Gyarados, then they would. Maybe be tempted to lock into like discharge and switch to Mamoswine. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Hmm, discharge is annoying. Th that's so risky though, because it's like if you fake out the Rotom and just drag and dance up, then they'll still be faster because pretty... they're timid scarfed, won't they? Right, if they go timid scarf. Like so much of this is contingent off what's yeah, 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 which is really tricky. I just can't believe Rotom didn't make an appearance last time. Like, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, like, if, if Rotom is bulky, like, it can survive a plus one waterfall as well. Yeah. So, I suppose it doesn't necessarily need to be um, Maybe, scarfed. Yeah, right. No, that's a good point, though. Like, their switch out options are also very, very good. And that's what makes it tricky. Hmm. This is... I don't... I, I do... I do still like Lucario, but I'm like if they do lead with the Rotom, they can just overheat. I suppose if we did like you know last game, we got a lot of momentum because on turn two, I think we lost our um, Lucario, but that allowed us to get the free switch in with Volcaro and the start Quiver dancing up. If we did lead yeah. with Lucario, the only thing um, like it would be threatening the Kangaskhan obviously, but the only real way they would be able to knock us out before we could knock them out is with an overheat. So if they do yeah. lock into overheat, we'll one see they're scarfed. And two, they'll be locked into it, and that'll give us opportunity to bring in maybe something like the Gyarados and start. Um, or maybe not the Gyarados, because we can't have two Megas on the same side. Maybe something else and start. I think it's Zoomerol. Yeah, probably potentially. Could... Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. Um, I like that a lot. So maybe we do want to leave with Lucario. So <sighs> let's start off with Lucario, then. What would be the worst-case scenario for Lucario? Um, the Rotom or the Gengar, I guess. Or a Scarfed Mamoswine. Yeah, uh, Metagross can be a little bit annoying since close combat isn't a what hit KO, but yeah. I, I still see Volk Lucario being an okay option. It just, like, if they do Scarf Mammoth one and lead with that, that's really bad. Yeah, yeah. I suppose but... we could switch, like, the Intimidate in on that, though. Right. Actually, yeah, that's a good point because we do just have Gyarados. Well, maybe not if they, they combine it with, like, a Discharge spam, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be so ugly. <laughs> um. Now I'm thinking, like, Mammal Swine Rotom as a lead option from their end. Yeah, because that is a very... Like, if even if not a lead, it's a definite turn two scenario. Yeah. Potential. And in that case, it's like, you gotta figure out which one is Scarfed, but then Zoomero could come in and maybe... Even Aqua Jet just does a lot of damage to them. Yeah, like a combination of Aqua Jet and Bullet Punch would knock out the Mammal Swine. Yeah, exactly. So... We've definitely got some options here, and I am liking Lucaria the more I'm thinking about it. Yeah. But if we did go with Azumarill, which one would we drop again? 
Like I think if we go support Volk, maybe Amoongus, but that's also once again, I mean like they could just sweep us with rain then. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So maybe if we didn't have the Amoongus, we could go with the Pasho Berry Sunny Day Volcarona. Or Right. I don't know. Or still just have Sunny Day on the Air Maybe, Ra- maybe Raichu. Sesh. Maybe drop Raichu. I don't know. Like they put in a lot of work last time we played them, but this time they've got a Mammoth Swine. They've got uh you know, it's likely Verizia might come out. Like I just see uh, Raichu putting in a lot less work other than fake out pressure. And lightning rod. And mm, that's true, yeah. Yeah, that is that is really the, the only thing that, that keeps Raichu in this. Right. I mean, we could put an air balloon on it. It's just the problem with air balloon is... Because it would, you know, would help us against Discharge and Earthquake. The problem with air balloon is it shows the item straight away. They know that we wouldn't be... Um, a Solvest yeah, or anything else. And they yeah. would probably assume that we did have things like Encore. Right, right. But... <laughs> be all right. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, it's funny. We've been talking for like forty minutes, and I'm still not sure like what the <laughs> yeah, second plan is. It's just, it's just like it's one of those matches where like I guess we can play it by ear. Yeah. Um, just like, because we're, this is we're like... almost there. We just need to find a little push to get us over the line. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like I am. I mean, look at their team for Amoongus. Like Zen Headbutt, Icicle Crash, Overheat. You know, right. It's There's pretty, a lot of anti Amoongus. Yeah, here. it's pretty hostile to it. The only reason we'd really want it is for their rain mode. Right. And it was Amoongus that pulled us through last game, so maybe they just won't go rain mode. Yeah, I, actually, I think that's a good point. For example, okay, let's say they don't go rain mode, then we don't bring Amoongus. Um, if they go, we've got to have an answer to it, so we do bring Amoongus, and then maybe so, drop Aerodactyl then. Well, well, <laughs> I mean, they're always going to bring the Kingdra on Team Preview, aren't they? So Yeah, unless they end up not, I don't know, like... I, I, we'll find out soon enough. Yeah, yeah. When we play them. If we did drop the Amoongus, we would still have, we could still go with Sunny Day on the Aerodactyl, and that would give us something for the rain mode. Yeah. And yeah. Um, uh, Raichu is okay against the rain mode as well. Like, yeah. Yeah, the, the Life Orb Draco Meteor did, like, 75% or something last time, so. Right. It's enough to, like, maybe endeavor them. Um, or I, I just I don't see them bring full ma- Rainbow with Poly Parasect and King Drill. Like that's three Pokemon, and they know we have like we're gonna be better prepared for it. So I think the mind games here is that like, and I don't think that's a I think like it's just not as safe as an option. So I think there's more leeway to not bring Amoongus this time. Yeah, I'm I'm leaning towards that too. I'm thinking okay. maybe not Amoongus. Yeah. So okay, so I think we've got our six, and yep. How how are we going to lead? What was we thinking? Um, Lucario and. So if we didn't have Amoongus, we would want Rage Powder on the Volcarona. We're going to go with yes. supportive yes. Ro- uh, Volcarona, yeah. Definitely. So, yeah, maybe Lucario Volcarona then. Mm-hmm. And see where we go from there. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, look, if they don't have full rain mode, like, let's say for some reason Poly Kingdra aren't on opposite sides and they just choose not to bring, like, Kingdra or something... Um, then we could lead with Luke Volker run a lot safer. Otherwise, if the rain mode is still, like, present, uh, you know, maybe lead with Raichu Lucario. Mm. How, yeah, maybe. Yeah, we don't have, yeah, we because, don't have Nuzzle. Yeah, because then if they do go with, like, a Scarf Rotom, then I suppose that kind of falls to Scarf Mamoswine, though. Right. Pretty hard. Uh, I guess the other question is, do we still want to have, like, Nuzzle on Raichu, or do we want to have, uh, Thunderbolt? Because Thunderbolt was the reason why we won last time around, but that was uh, mainly because of Tornadus in the back. Yeah, we did. What? Well, but last time we had what Thunderbolt, Nuzzle, Fake Out, and Endeavor, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was thinking Faint could be potentially nice, just in case that um, if they do go with like a Perish Trap mode. I mean, we haven't even considered that in this video yet. They yeah. could go with like Gothitelle and you know Perish Song, and Faint would just help us Faint Crunch whatever the the Gothitelle. Right, right. Um, like, I mainly like Nuzzle, because if you do get the Nuzzle onto Kingdra, if yeah. they do bring it, or onto anything, the main tricky thing is we can't Nuzzle Mamoswine or Rotom, and those are, like, the two threats that Lucario really just doesn't want outspeeding. Yeah, I mean, they did have Substitute on both Kingdra and um, Metagross last time as well. Yeah, yeah. So we wouldn't we just want to Nuzzle into that, but I can't right. see Nuzzle being okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. 
Well, we've been going for three quarters of an hour, haven't we? So shall we maybe wrap this up and we have, yeah, and then Sorry, get together what we've got place. and <laughs> and then, we, then you I, can yeah, see what we make it to. <laughs> we really got to just play it right from this. Like, there's no set preparation. Like, we only prepare so much, honestly. And it's like once we get into a battle, we really go from there. I think. Yeah. Well, right, but, yeah, so, yeah. Let's I think the up. idea is bring those seven, have Shininja as the eight, and then drop Amoongus if they don't seem to be dedicated towards rain mode, and then. Uh, based off team preview, I mean, I guess we'll figure out which other one to drop. Mainly leaning towards, I don't know. I'm thinking Aerodactyl, but yeah, potentially. Yeah, yeah. I think either we... a Moongus or Aerodactyl because both of them do kind of help us with the rain matchup with Sunny Day. Um, but the Aerodactyl does help us against the Rotom as well. Hmm. And like a Sky Drop and a Dragon Dance or something could work nicely. Or. It's just, they've, they've got quite a few Pokemon that are too heavy for us to sky drop. Right. So, that could be an issue too. But anyway, yeah, so... Let, let, let's, <laughs> we'll let's, wrap it up um, now. Yeah, this will this will be a, a surprise for you guys to see what we lead uh, in the battle. <laughs> yep, yep. Probably be and a surprise then, for us too. <laughs> yep, it, it's going to be a tricky one. I mean, I think we, like... I don't know, it's, it's really hard to prepare for this just because they have so many lead options and typically we kind of build around that. But I, we have the tools, it's just whether we can manage a proper setup or not. So we'll see what, what happens once we get into team preview. Yeah. All right, then. So the battle will be um, on my channel on Wednesday, I do believe. So, yep. um, yeah. Hope you're looking forward to it, and uh, we'll see you then. Peace.